do you think that it's uh, physiologically significant this decline or, or or not no i think that's a huge question in the in the field right now and, and um uh, i mean I, i would have believed that i think um you know without having done any experiments that you know it's so important in so many reactions there should there could be some limiting things where you know even a 20 or 30 percent decline Uh, as we age, do we have more NAD or NADH? So NADH measurements are, are very challenging and you know, there's always some debate around them whether you whether the redox state is being altered by the extraction method or you know just whether we even can pick it up well enough because it's it's at um, a much lower concentration than NAD. So based on the evidence we have so far, it seems clear that NAD plus goes down with age. Not that much, but that, that there is an overall decrease with age in a lot of tissues and NADH much less so, so that the redox state you know, may be shifting towards NADH at the same time as the total amounts going down a little bit. And uh, why do you think that it's a decline with uh, age? And is it, uh, you mentioned that it's a bit and it might be tissue specific. So what kind of tissue you see the, the strongest decline and what kind of tissue you don't see a decline? Um, we see it pretty clearly in adipose tissues, um, in the gut, in the intestines. Uh, we see it in liver uh, and in muscles in the heart um, pretty reproducibly. And so in adipose tissue, we get something like a 50% decline, which is the most dramatic. There, there's always this caveat that brown adipocytes, uh, which are the thermogenic ones that, that, that generate heat and have more mitochondria, have a lot more NAD in them. And, and so some of our adipose tissue depots have a few brown adipocytes in there when we're young and, and get more white as we age. Uh, and, and so there's a concern there that it's partly the composition of the tissue that could be changing with the adipose and not purely the amount of NAD in the same type of cell. Um, I think that's a little bit less of a concern with the muscle and the liver and the, and the intestines. So I do feel pretty confident this is happening. Um, but, but I think there is always that one caveat when you show the more dramatic effect in the adipose. <laughs> Yeah, and do you, do you believe that uh, you said that uh, in the adipocyte it's going down by 50%, but other it's less. So do you think that it's uh, physiologically significant, this decline, or, or, or not? No, I think that's a huge question in the, in the field right now. And, and uh, I mean, I, I would have believed that, I think, um, you know, without having done any experiments, that, you know, it's so important in so many reactions, there should, there's could be some limiting things where you know even a 20 or 30 percent decline would be felt um, in my own hands and in the lab at least the the experiments we've done in the heart and the skeletal muscle have suggested that you can knock down NAD levels to 30 percent of normal uh, and still be relatively uh, unimpaired in terms of function and so it really raises this question of like, does does the amount that we see uh, of a decrease with aging really matter um, and I think The, the most straightforward answer that I would hypothesize is that what we're seeing in aging is focal depletions. That if, if you're really able to go through the tissue in more detail, that you'd see there's some cells with almost no NAD that really are dysfunctional and other regions that are totally fine. That hasn't been easy to assess with the methods we've been using up till now. We're right on the cusp of being able to do that with imaging mass spectrometry. And so we're, mm -hmm. we're working on methods now, especially with Josh Rabinowitz's group at Princeton to do that. And, and I think We, we should have a very clear answer to whether or not that hypothesis is true very soon. Yeah. And if we'll continue to hypothesize, if it's okay with you, is it uh, the depletion you will see it more in uh, metabolic active tissues or in metabolic inactive tissue? What is your opinion or yeah. your hypothesis? Um, I'm not sure I've thought about it exactly that way before, <laughs> just because we see it in a mix, you know, these, the skeletal muscles mostly, you know, post-mitotic and the heart's post-mitotic for the most part where we're looking and we do see declines there, but we also see it in the intestine, which is highly replicative. So I'm not, I'm not yeah. sure we have evidence for a real strong bias right now. Okay, so it's uh, still unknown, which is okay. As we know, as in science, there are a lot of questions that are, uh, are not uh, answered. So my next question is, it sounds like, or not sounds like, you, you have a lot of evidence, and I've seen it in the literature, that NAD is declining with uh, the aging process. So now uh, I'm sure that they, our listeners will ask, okay, what can I do about that? And I will start with, let's say, more natural intervention. So if I am a, a gill that would like now to increase my NAD level because I'm uh, becoming older, 
what are natural ways for me to do it in, other than uh, consuming supplement we'll uh, discuss later. Yeah, I mean, I think the things we know right now are calorie restriction and exercise. Um, and I mean, I think exercise is the most obvious recommendation for anyone if you want to improve your health, right? I mean, across the board, that seems like the best thing we can do. And that, that in itself boosts NAD levels. And, and uh, let, let's start with caloric restriction. So do you need to, or I don't know if uh, this experiment has been done, but uh, do you need to fast completely? Do you need to cut a certain amount of calories or it's still not clear what is uh, the exact amount of uh, uh, fasting or caloric restriction that you need to do in order to improve your NAD level? Uh, I, I would say it's not clear. So, the, I mean, this is still based on, I think, three different rodent studies. Uh, when, when we say that calorie restriction might be a way to do this. So it should be clear that it's it's not shown at all in humans at this point. Uh, and the, in those studies, the, the calorie restriction was done with this sort of standard protocol of reducing calorie intake by 40% per day. And okay. there's been a lot of debate about how to translate that to humans exactly. Uh, I think most of the human studies have gone with a more like 25% reduction in calorie intake compared yeah. to what was required from weight maintenance, uh, partly under the argument that the mice comparing to are sedentary and obese for their species in many cases. And what, what about ketogenic diet? Can that also increase the NAD level? So the effects that I've seen from ketogenic diet are more related to the redox state. So it does increase the amount of NAD, but at the expense of NADH for the most part, okay. it's shifting that ratio. Uh, and that, that partly makes sense because when you, uh, consume sugar, right, it's going through glycolysis, which is producing NADH in the cytosol, uh, where uh, on ketogenic diet, everything's being metabolized inside the mitochondria, and you'd expect the cytosol to become more oxidized. And uh, do you think that it's uh, positive that you decrease the, uh, change the ratio with ketogenic diet, or you're not sure? <laughs> um, I mean, with all these things, it's always a little bit of speculation. I think from the point of view of things like sirtuins, um, it's positive, because I think sirtuins... Uh, in many cases, are seeing mostly the amount of, of NAD available to them, or and, and in some cases, in, potentially inhibited by NADH, and so that change in ratio is enough to drive their activity more. Okay, so if you want to activate the CIL2 family, it's positive. If not, we are not sure. But uh, again, as we know in science, uh, uh, at least that's the best science that we know for today, and we need to live with that. So I would like now to talk about exercise. So exercise, is it a long-term exercise or is it enough that I went for a, a run today and then a, tomorrow my NAD plus level will be higher or I need to exercise for a, a month or a week or a, two months? Any, day, any data about that? Uh, I think, uh, the, I mean, there's not a huge amount, but the, I think what we know suggests that it's cumulative. So it's, it's clear from a single bout of exercise that NAMPT, which is the rate-limiting enzyme for NAD biosynthesis, goes up in muscle. Um, there's a few studies that have looked you know, within hours of exercise and have not shown an increase in NAD at that time point. Uh, but I think the fact that the, the salvage pathway that makes the NAD is going up already suggests that, you know, maybe 12 hours later, you probably would have some uh, increase in NAD, whether or not it's measurable at that point. Uh, and then certainly looking at exercise trained individuals over time, they have more NAD in their muscle than, than people who are sedentary. In fact, there was a human study published a couple of years ago now. Um, that showed that if you grouped older people into highly exercise trained and sort of moderately healthy and, and then sort of unhealthy uh, people who, who were, uh, had problems with mobility, uh, there was a clear distinction in terms of NAD levels in their muscle. And the highly trained older people actually were not statistically significantly lower than young people in terms of muscle okay. NAD levels. Okay.